Next up, we continue our journey through the Northwest Passage, a shipping route that links the North Atlantic and Arctic Oceans. It's impassable for most of the year due to its thick Arctic ice, and even when the ice melts during the summer, it's still a difficult crossing to attempt as Karen Bowerman is finding out. Another typical day in the Northwest Passage, but this isn't a typical excursion. We're calling at Devon Island, a place too bleak to sustain life. Wearing wet weather gear and PFDs or life jackets, we head to the beach, but we're not the first visitors ashore. What we're going to do is keep our PFDs on today for obvious reasons. We've seen a bear in the area. We're confident that bear doesn't pose any immediate threat, but we <laughs> want to be safe. Devon Island tells a story of struggle and survival. Back in the 20s, three Mounties, Royal Canadian Mounted Police, were sent to live here to guard the passage. It was probably the most isolated job in the world. For years, the men here didn't even have a radio. The only news they got of the outside world came from a government ship bringing fuel and supplies, and that only visited once a year. Ah, uh, for just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage. We tend to think of the Brits, they, they did it a lot, arrive somewhere, plant a flag for king and country or queen and country uh, at a time when many other nations were showing interest in the north. Uh, Canada as a new nation was, was right to um, try and um, settle some of these areas. To find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort. Even before then, charting the passage was a matter of huge national pride. As our own quest continues, we honour those who didn't make it, including the 19th century British explorer John Franklin and his crew. So if you can raise your glasses uh, and drink to their health and their memory to Franklin and the North West Passage. And if you don't want to drink it, share it with these thirsty sailors. Through a land so wide and savage and make a northwest passage to the sea. A few days later, it's a beautiful morning at sea. But it soon clouds over and we hit ice. Is it that big a deal? Absolutely. If you look at the historical expeditions through this area, uh, a lot of ships have been lost out here, and uh, we believe due to ice. The ice brings bears, but while the animals move freely, we'll soon be stranded. What's more, the ice is blocking the Bellet Strait, our key to completing the passage. Time to bring in the big guys, the Canadian Coast Guard. Luckily, they happen to be close by, and they're not short of tricks, which is just as well, since we're not the only ones in a bit of a mess. Twenty hours later, at twilight, we see the last of the ice. From then on, it's plain sailing. And as the sun sets on 12 dramatic days at sea, we look back at an exhausting but exhilarating journey. Somehow, against the odds, we've made it through the passage. Karen Bowerman reporting there from the Northwest Passage.